Look at this. I woke up this morning and there's a giraffe in my backyard. Good morning, everyone. Or perhaps I should say Jumbo. We've been at Walt Disney World celebrating the 50th anniversary for well over a week now. And from the moment we landed here, it's been nonstop action. The celebrations, checking out new rides, riding old favorites, tasting food from around the world, all practically without pausing for breath. So now that we've reached the end of this trip, we decided to switch things up and change the pace a little bit. You know, add a little rest and hopefully a little recovery. By checking into Disney's famous Animal Kingdom Lodge. This behind me, my friends, is Jumbo House. And it is easily one of the coolest hotels at Walt Disney World, if not the entire United States. Ironic considering this place is so well themed around Africa. That when you're here, you almost feel like you're not in the United States at all. Look at this. Look at how amazing this looks. And this is just the Port Cochere. If you think this is impressive, just wait till you see the Lobby. The exterior of the building might be beautifully built, but it's got nothing on this. Behold the glory of Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's breathtaking. Now, if you're anything like me, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh. Would you look at the size of this place? It's gargantuan. It's massive elephantine. Jumbo House alone contains over 900 rooms. And including the other wing, which I think is called the Kidani House, the DVC section, well over a thousand. Which means thousands of people can stay at the Animal Kingdom Lodge at any given time. And although it's certainly believably massive enough for that, somehow it still feels much more intimate. When you stay here, you just feel cozy. Part of that has got to be the combination of amazing, massive modern architecture with the visuals of traditional African architectural elements and building materials. The outdoors is constantly meeting the indoors in here. I mean, just look at all this wood. Lashed beams over here, stick ceilings. Look at this archway in a simulated mud wall, complete with this almost thatch-like roof pattern. I believe that's all actually concrete right there, but you would never know. It all looks so completely natural. Other hotels have a splash of theming here and there. The Animal Kingdom Lodge is themed from head to toe. In fact, it's so fully themed, some might say, it's a bridge too far. Oh, in all the years I've been coming here, I have never come up to the fifth floor. To cross the Maasai Bridge. I've always enjoyed looking at it from the ground, you know, but that was, uh... That was always enough for me, oh boy. I feel like part of the adventure is every time you stay somewhere, again, you should, uh, try to do something new. So here we go. Oh, oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> I am actually genuinely impressed by the view. Because, oh, of course, it is genuinely very impressive. But I also legit get vertigo sometimes. So I'm genuinely terrified as well. Okay, that's enough Maasai Bridge for one day. Seriously though, this place is so huge, so epic, and so detailed. And no matter how many times I come here, I see new things. And I'm not talking about little things, I'm talking about big things. Like look at these masks on top of the beams. I don't know how in the world I never saw those before. Well actually, I do. Look at the pattern in the wooden floor down there. Now look up at that amazing thatched ceiling. Yes, made of concrete, but there's beams lashed together and thatching. This place is literally floor to ceiling covered in patterns and textures. I mean, look, the chandeliers are all made out of shields and spears. And the designs, authentically African. Speaking of authenticity, one thing that a lot of people don't know about this place is that the Animal Kingdom Lodge actually houses one of the largest collections of African art outside of Africa. Anywhere in the world. And it is a stunning collection. And it comes from all over the continent. The Sahara, the Ivory Coast, Mali, Nigeria. Nigeria, Kenya. There's unbelievable stuff all over this lobby. I mean, these are things that you don't see every day, or at least I don't see every day. I shouldn't have just said that it was one of the biggest collections of African art. I should have also mentioned it's one of the finest collections. Look at the quality of the basket work, some of the amazing bead work. I mean, there's a a beaded crown right there. We've got this terracotta figure right here that looks a little bit like the African Wallace, Wallace and Gromit, you know? And of course, the Ijele, this thing. 
has always blown my mind. I, mean, I have quite a few family members who do quilting and sewing, but I've never seen them make anything like that. Seriously, there's little tucked away nooks and crannies full of this art. And it's super interesting because some of it is a little more recent than some of the other traditional stuff. Like, look at this. This is a carving of a colonial officer. That is something you don't see every day. Well, unless you work here or another museum. The colonial era artifacts are an interesting touch, mostly because they tie in with the photographs in here. Taken on safaris in the 20s and 30s of lots of different traditional African people. That is so cool. Oh, look at this. You have some religious artifacts. An Islamic prayer board, an animist figure, and there is an Ethiopian Christian cross. Look at these guys. You can see right after you're done checking in. I don't know what that is, but it looks awesome. Now, all of this stuff is amazing and impressive in its own way. Like the speed work. Look at that. Look at the patterns. They're made from what must be seriously thousands of tiny beads. A little sign at the bottom says it's a beaded sword sheath. That must have been a huge sword. I was gonna say all of this stuff is impressive, but there's some things that really stick out to me here. Like the metal objects, for example. These guys in the back are bronze currencies. And look at these in the front. Stone Age axes. Got the Stone Age, the Bronze Age. It's just such a wide range of artifacts. But it's not just historical artifacts. I mean, look all around. The carpet, the furniture. There's detailed patterns and carvings and textures everywhere you look. I could spend hours, and I have, just indoors looking at all of these things. But I feel like to do that is to miss the best part. Because as amazing as the African theming is, it's not called the African Kingdom Lodge. It's called the Animal Kingdom Lodge. And they don't call it that for nothing. Just outside the back doors of the lobby, where I can finally take this off, is the far and away best part of the whole Animal Kingdom Lodge experience. The live animals themselves. Look at that. There's a giraffe just having a meal. All right, easy, easy. Not gonna hit ya. Not gonna hit ya. Dude, this part is the best part. They have a couple of these different wildlife viewing areas. Pretty sure this one is the biggest and most elaborate, but it's definitely not the only one. Because, I mean, look around. If you think about it, all of these rooms are viewing areas as well. Gosh, I can never get sick of looking at giraffes. Seriously. Look at them. Just chewing and chewing. <laughs> well, I know it's hard to see, but there are other animals way off there in the distance. It's a little hot right now. I mean, it's pretty much noon, so most of the animals are around the corners, in the shade. We'll have to come back and try and see more of them later on. Yesterday when we checked in, it was all cloudy and stormy, and so from our balcony, we could see the storms rolling through and the animals all roaming around. It was wild. Our plan was to go to Magic Kingdom, but we're going to have to do that in just a few minutes today instead, just because we didn't want to get all soggy, but we're just going in there to grab a few things before we head home. Mostly, once I check into Animal Kingdom Lodge, I really don't want to leave and go anywhere else. Real quick though, before I head back to the room to get Allie, that main loungy portion of the lobby isn't all there was. Past all the finery we've already seen, just off to the side, there's almost a whole other world unto itself. Because on the side of the lobby, you'll see some rock work where a spring is bubbling up traveling under this bridge to create the most amazing waterfalls. It's awesome. They're sort of understated because they're supposed to be the sort of natural thing where animals would come get a drink. It's sort of a natural sea for watering hole. But to me, the most impressive part is the layering here. The multiple levels and layers of paths all leading both to the literal watering hole and the metaphorical watering hole. The Victoria Falls Lounge and Bar. Now if you keep continuing down, 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 following the water all the way to the bottom, you will reach a place that is very pool indeed. <laughs> See what I did there? This whole stunning lower level is just beautiful and it contains two incredible restaurants, Boma and Jico, which I don't think is open right now, but I've eaten there and it was really good. Both of them are very fancy, very pricey, very high quality places. Now once they open up, the smell coming from down here is incredible. To get to the pool area outside, you have to walk right through here. So it tempts me every time. Speaking of water, watering holes and the pool area. We are headed out to see all of the above. Look at that, the theme of the water seeping out from the lobby from that spring continues as it bubbles up outdoors and then comes flowing out all the way to the pool itself. Dude, look at this. It's 
gorgeous. And it's all designed to be like a watering hole. That far end over there actually enters the pool at this very shallow slope, no steps. Just like it would be if you were to walk down into an actual pool of water out there in the wild. All around the pool area, there are these tucked away little extras. There are little hidden hot tubs or spas, a playground, even a flamingo pool. And they're all themed around that same water bubbling up and flowing out of that lobby. Water, the source of life. There's also a bar next to the pool that is very popular with the parents. But the spot that was the most popular with me, of course, the hot tub. Because let me tell you, after a long day walking around in the parks, that hot water is a leg's best friend. Back behind all the pool stuff, as you can see, there's even more wildlife viewing area. Unfortunately, it's still warm. So all the animals are way back there, really far away. Ah, oh, well, we'll catch them later. Actually, speaking of catching them later, we're gonna have to continue our tour later because we promised a friend that hooked us up with this room that we'd go to Magic Kingdom and complete the 50th anniversary been there collection series things that he wants. All right, Magic Kingdom, here we come. One last time this trip. Dude, that pandemic is still heimbucking everything. There was no Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween party this year. Normally, since it's sort of Halloween themed, I have an excuse to stay out here longer this time of year. But at least we did get to come to the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World and the Magic Kingdom. Hard to believe it's been 50 years. I wasn't even born yet, but they remember. They remember. I love this place so much, and my long-term plan was always to live much closer to it, at least for half the year. Of course, you guys remember I had that big court battle, a custody thing a couple of years ago, so it'll still be a few years, so that's possible. But I still like to think, maybe one day, who knows? Till then, I'll be bouncing back and forth like a ping pong ball, as per usual. All right, now that that little momentary interruption is out of the way. We can head into Starbucks to complete our mission. Whoa, holy cinnamon and pumpkin spice. Starbucks is very popular today. Old Ishmael Pike would be proud. Wouldn't you, Ishmael? Hey, how come you don't have to wear a mask? Oh no, fail! Somehow, someway, the Magic Kingdom Starbucks ran out of pins. Well, luckily we have one zillion Florida friends, so... Someone will be able to help us out remotely, I hope. Well, at least we got a chance to say goodbye to the Magic Kingdom and Cinderella's Castle. Goodbye, old gal. See you real soon. Well, that didn't go according to plan, but at least we got to see the Carousel of Progress and Sunny Eclipse real quick for Allie. She loves those things. Ooh, look at this. This is the first time this whole trip that there hasn't been a line to check out the merch in the Main Street Cinema, which is playing host to the Walt Disney World Vault Collection. This is where... They're selling all the vintage merch from the 50th anniversary. They got Mr. Toad's Wild Ride shirts, tons of original Walt Disney World shirts being reproduced, a little more vintage looking than they would have been originally, obviously. Okay, dude, all of the stuff in here is like way better than the regular 50th merch. Maybe I'm just a sucker for retro stuff and for history, which I know I am, but seriously, look at all this stuff. It is fantastic. Up on the ceiling, they have reproductions of all the old original ticket book tickets. Look at that. And the whole center area is plastered with them. I didn't even notice that's what Mr. Toad was standing on. This merch is amazing. Some of it is just, you know, kind of throwbacky. Vintage designs, slightly distressed, modern t-shirts. And obviously the modern pin trading style pins weren't around back then. You know our magic bands. No magic bands back in 71, but it's blowing my mind. Just how many old school products. They're actually just straight up reproducing. Look at these old fashioned collector bells. Look at these plates right here. I still find originals of these in antique stores all the time. Look at this, they're even reproducing the old Disney World ashtrays. Just like Walt used to use. Old school salt and pepper shakers, copies of old original placemats. Can't think of the last time I saw a good placemat for sale. The old plush Mickey Mouse visor. Old school kids cups and vintage style souvenir glassware. Probably frustrating for collectors who got their hands on the old school originals, but still awesome for everybody else. Dude, look at these embroidered jackets right here. Very old school, very fancy. I don't hate it. There is so much incredible retro or retro themed merchandise in here. It's actually amazing. And I'm not trying to knock the new school uh, modern 50th anniversary merch, but just between you and me and Jay Thaddeus Toad over here, almost everything in here is cooler than the new school stuff, in my opinion anyway. But then again, I am kind of a nut for old school Walt Disney World history. See, all of this just goes to show you Whenever you can go vintage, 
Go Vintage. No wonder it was such a madhouse trying to get in there opening day, dude. That stuff was awesome, right? Yes. The best thing about the 50th anniversary merch in the Emporium was that giant castle. Wish I could buy that. Otherwise, I was kind of like, eh. It just wasn't the stuff that appealed to me. Except the pins. The pins were awesome. Yeah. Somebody chummed to the waters. Oh, man. Yes. Yes. It's like the monorail came by to say farewell. It was like a 21 monorail salute with 20 less monorails than that. Oh, all right, back at the hotel. Oh, dude, it feels so peaceful here after Magic Kingdom. This seriously must be the happiest hotel at Walt Disney World. You never see a negative face. Wait a minute, maybe that's because we all have to wear masks inside still. Oh gosh, it feels good to be back. You know what, now that it's cooled down outside, maybe more animals will be out. Well, there's only one way to find out. Sorry, poor little Allie. The pool will have to wait just a couple more minutes. <gasps> I already see another giraffe right there. See, look at that. No matter how many times I stay here, when I see a giant bird like this or a giraffe running around picking things up off the ground, which <laughs> look at that, it looks so awkward. That's amazing. I just get stoked, dude. Stoked. See, staying here feels like you're in a national park, right? Yeah. You smell that? I smell campfire, too. It just feels like you're in Yosemite or someplace like that, the Grand Canyon. It's like, Disney World is awesome, but this is a whole other level up. Look at this. Double giraffes. Double giraffes. Wow. I wonder what they're eating. Look at this. There's giraffe, wildebeest, zebras, others. All moving around, roaming around. Just enjoying the cooler weather of sundown. It's incredible. Hey, look at that. I did smell campfire. And look at, they're roasting marshmallows, which just happens to be Ali's very favorite thing to do. Roasting marshmallows in a campfire. Apparently the marshmallows are free and complimentary. You have to pay $6 for a s'mores kit. Kind of makes sense. But look at this, free marshmallows to roast. Ali's in heaven. This is so awesome. I'm learning about impalas. Allie's roasting marshmallows on an open fire. The first time we've slowed down and it's actually felt like some kind of vacation. Hey, no wonder people come here. Look at that. She's eating the marshmallow. Having fun now? Mm -hmm. Oh, look how happy you are. I did not know that marshmallows and giraffes could go together so well. Wow, look at this. Here we have the wild zebra or zebra as the Brits say for some weird reason. Dude, what's so awesome about this is how many people are watching from their hotel room balconies. Look at that. It's like the Coliseum for zebras. Ooh, did you hear that? That was a feisty zebra sound. This makes me want to go on a safari really bad. Are there gluten-free safaris? Oh, look at this. These two zebras have now been joined by a roan antelope. Wow, isn't that amazing? It's actually really surprising that the roan antelope is joining the zebra because typically speaking, they like to be a roan. All right, well, there's no cheetahs out there. At least now you guys can see I wasn't lying. There's animals everywhere here. Awesome. See, what I like about this resort is it's so educational. You can learn a lot about the animals just from the signs, much less all the little guides and interpreters they have out here. Plus, from time to time, they have big campfire presentations. And once you get bored of learning about animals, you can always head back inside. I keep forgetting to mention that right by the entrance, they've got an amazing store called the Zawadi Marketplace. And just out front, for the past couple nights, they've had this guy Joshua out here hand carving a bunch of the stuff they sell inside. Awesome, dude. So much talent, dude. This guy has been carving monkey after monkey. That's awesome, dude. Makes me wish I would work on my carving skills. As for the store itself, you can buy all kinds of hand-carved African-themed souvenirs. Some of them made here, some actually made in Africa. Or you can buy exotic plants, play a game of tic-tac-toe, or even have your name turned into a custom piece of artwork. They also, of course, have all your standard, typical Disney merchandise. From mini ears, to magic bands, to robes, t-shirts, hats, and sunscreen. Plus some cool Animal Kingdom Lodge themed art. And, of course, plenty to drink for the whiners in the family. Oh, that's a cool Christmas ornament. All right, we're gonna have to put a pin in talking about this store for now. Because I promised Allie we'd go to the pool. But like I was saying, on the way, we can learn more about Africa. 
Africa. Because it's not just the lobby full of amazing information about that other continent. Down each one of the many, many side hallways leading to the rooms, you reach these various junctions, which are like miniature museums in and of themselves, with all kinds of information about different elements of traditional African life, complete with matching artifacts from those places. It's awesome because each one of those junctions is different. Like this one near our room is all themed around African households. Like the various traditional tasks you do at home, or the vessels you'd use in everyday life. And of course, there's more artifacts on display. Also down these long hallways, you'll find windows with many more opportunities for wildlife viewing. Oh, it's hard to make out, but through that crack, I can see a beautiful, Wild African zebra. That's amazing. Whoa, and then out of this window, I can see an even more rare, amazing animal. A wild African bobcat. All right, we're seriously out of time, but I want to show you the room real quick. And if you're really curious about the rooms here, I've filmed quite a few of them in the past. But this is what ours is like today. The whirlwind tour is this, starting with this wonderful wardrobe right here, which I believe goes all the way to Narnia, if only I could fit still. And then you have this amazing bathroom in here with, and I appreciate this, a solid door separating the sinks from the uh, seating area. Because when you're using the seating area, you don't want one of those glass doors like they have in a lot of modern hotels. They got a pretty nice shower in there. Prefer a bathtub, but if you're gonna have a shower only, you can do a lot worse, believe me. Then you've got the double sinks. That way everyone's got their own place to spit. A nice poster about my favorite band, Hakuna Matata. A little miniature refrigerator, a coffee maker, bog standard chest of drawers. With, and uh, I don't mean to brag, I don't want you to get too excited, a color. Television. Oh! And there are, of course, two beds just in case Allie gets sick of me. I do snore sometimes, and even though it's not that much farther away, probably helps a little. And then not one, again, not to brag, but two chairs oh, with a table in between. What will they think of next? But of course, the best part, ladies and germs, is as I showed you this morning epic balcony looking out over. The savannah. It takes a while to get your eyes adjusted to the dark, but once they are, you end up spotting a bunch of wildlife down there. You'll see all kinds of birds and wildebeest and giraffes roaming around. It's weird to be in the corner room with all the other rooms kind of looking into your room, but I don't even mind. Because this hotel is one of my absolute favorite places on Earth. Awesome. In so many years since I've been to this hotel, I forgot how much I genuinely love it. And I'm really grateful that I got to share this visit with you guys. If you also enjoy the adventures that we share, don't forget that we have a Patreon that has podcasts and different stuff. An online store with adventure gear that we get made ourselves. We pack it all up and ship it from our home. You can find that at store.randomland.com. And then there's Instagram and there's click subscribe and ring the bell and do all that other stuff that people are always telling you to do. Aren't you sick of people telling you what to do? Yeah, yeah, I'll bet you are. So I'm not going to bug you about it anymore. But the option's there if you're interested. Oh. And with that, my friends, we are out of memory cards, we're out of batteries, and I'm out of brain power. It's been fantastic being here for the kickoff of the 50th, and we will be back. Because let's face it, this place rocks Hidden Rafiki. Oh, and Hidden Simba. For now, my friends, we've done all we can do. So we've done our duty. So it's time to go home and sleep well. Bye-bye. <laughs>
like a guy driving a toll booth.